What's up guys, welcome to my portion of the Hush Life vlog. Um, as you saw, I'm on the Can-Am. Decided to buzz up here for last light. There's not a lot of time left, but I figured I'd come up here and look for a bull elk. So I've got my new tripod. This is the Vortex Ridge View or Ridge Line. I showed it to you guys on the last vlog. So I just spotted two bulls from a long, long ways away. I'm gonna get the spotting scope on them and see what they are. Losing my truck. Hey, get out of here, dude. Let's go. <laughs> All right, guys, I made it back home from my quick little scout trip, and uh, look who I ran into What's Sheldon that? and Colton. Hello. These guys are going on a mission. Their annual caribou mission. Yeah. What are you guys, 100 percenters? Yeah, so on far, caribou? So far, hopefully this year it is too. We got a big group, so we're hoping. Yeah, hopefully I'm part of that group next year. So my first hunt of this year is also um, caribou. And I'll be going out with Casey and I think Logan and Matt are both coming to film. I'm not sure if they're going to be tag holders. Oh, break. But yeah, these guys have gone out the last two, three? Uh, two, two years. This is the third year we're going. Third year and two for two on the first couple years. Yep. Sir. So if it's cool with these guys, I'll put some pictures up on the screen. They've got some nice caribou film their hunts that are on uh, your channel, right? Uh, I think I've got one on there, yeah. You haven't filmed, you haven't uploaded the new one? No. Dang, I think I've seen snippets on Instagram, but they've <laughs> shot some nice caribou. <laughs> so I'm hoping to go do the same, but they came over because I'm going to run them to the airport, drop them off, and hopefully on the next vlog or two, I can get an update and show you guys. Yeah, hopefully, huh? When so you come home? The 14th, so six days. 14th. Oh, I won't be home on the 14th, but I will be There will be one more vlog before I leave to Alaska. So hopefully I'll give you guys an update I just wanted to say what's up to these guys. So off to the airport we go All right, we got those guys dropped off at the airport and now I'm here in the shop and I'm going to just take a minute to tell you guys about my tags that I have this year mainly elk tags. So if you're not aware um, I have five elk tags in five different states. So I'm going to tell you about each one, and then I am going to give you guys my predictions and strategies of these hunts. And I thought that'd be fun to document now. I'll be able to look back and see if I had any correct predictions or not. So let's go through each tag in the order, by chronological order by date, and I'll tell you about each one. The first one starts with Colorado. This is over the counter archery elk hunt. I did this hunt last year if you follow the channel and I was like this close to killing a bull two times. One of them being a really big bull for this unit anyways that Matt called in a couple days prior. 
So we knew where he was. I wasn't with Matt when he filmed this awesome clip, um, but I went back into that area, called the bull in. He came in like a, on a string, and unfortunately right behind this tree, it, it happened really fast, and I wasn't able to uh, get drawn back until he saw me, drew back. He stopped. Again, should have killed this bull, but I shot over him. So I have the same tag. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going, but part of me really wants to go back to this unit and this area to get redemption on this spot. So my prediction, a Colorado archery elk is going to be some calling on the ground and some tree saddle. So I think both of them have highly like ability to get it done. I had opportunities on both last year from the tree and from the ground calling. So I'm gonna do that again, same strategy, uh, stealth mode, a uh, lot of hunters on this this specific hunt. Not a ton of elk, but enough to get in there and get it done. So first one, Colorado archery elk. My next hunt is going to be in October. And this is mid-October, New Mexico hunt. I've done the hunt three years in a row and I've killed three bulls, including this one, like a nice 345 bull. So I'm going with my buddy Dreo. He'll be there, Shed Crazy, Chad Mendez. So three of us have tags. And this is a five day hunt, first rifle. My strategy on this hunt is to glass. These bulls are coming off of the rut and some of them moving to, or transitioning away from the cows and secluded to themselves or maybe another bull or two. So this hunt, you can have two things. You can find bulls with cows still and you can find those bigger, older bulls secluded by themselves in deep, dark country. So it's a rifle hunt. So my plan is just like the last couple of years, glass a lot, locate elk and get in on them and make it happen with a gun. Um, the next hunt is November. This is going to be the first week of November in Idaho with a rifle. So this is more likely to find bulls either alone or secluded with a couple other bulls. Still, even in November with a chance that some of these bulls are with the herd of cows. Um, but in my opinion, the bigger bulls are going to be off the cows by the first week of November, but there is still a chance to find a decent, nice bull with cows. So game plan is to uh, spend a few days before that scouting, locating elk. Hopefully by opening morning, I've got some bulls located, move in, um, get high glass, shoot them with a rifle. That's the plan, you never know. First off, you just gotta find the dang things because you never know. This is weather dependent, they could be anywhere, but at this time they are kind of moving to their winter range. That one is also like a general season tag, so high pressure, not a lot of success. The New Mexico one, to kind of backtrack a little bit, I got that as a landowner tag, but it is unit wide. That means I can hunt the entire unit. It's a low desired unit. It's not like some of the other areas in New Mexico that take forever to draw. So the next hunt is going to be Utah, limited entry late season rifle on one of our best units. And you guys are gonna see that this hunt, we're gonna film and see a ton of bulls in the preseason scouting. Um, I'm gonna look over a lot of elk and have the ability to just kind of pick and choose which one to go after. It's not that I'm, I'm not gonna see bulls or have opportunity, it's am I gonna find the bull that gets me excited for this quality of a tag. I'm gonna have a lot of help. A lot of people are welcome on this hunt where the other hunts are really gonna be one, two, maybe three guys. This one, everybody's welcome. I'd love for my dad to be there, a bunch of friends, all the hush guys, as many people that can make it. Go make a good film, find and locate the biggest bull possible. But you guys are gonna see the difference from like OTC tag to like limited entry tag and how many elk and the quality of elk that we see. So just wait, when we do the Utah hunt, you guys will see a lot of big bulls, a lot of busted up bulls, but they are most likely gonna be in their winter range. Big bulls will be secluded to themselves or possibly with other bulls. Um, and that's what we're gonna see, big groups of bulls. Uh, usually the smaller bulls are in bigger groups, the bigger bulls are in smaller groups, but you never know. A big bull could be with a, uh, a bunch of small bulls at that time of the year. You just never know who's gonna be hanging out with who, but most likely those big bulls are gonna be by themselves or with other older age class bulls. I'm excited about that one. Then the last one is December, starts in December, and this is a late season rifle hunt in Arizona. And you guys are gonna see, this is a draw tag. Um, we're gonna most likely see better quality bulls, um, maybe not as good as the Utah hunt, but we have a chance to kill a giant. So the strategy there, glass, 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 do some preseason scouting and hopefully locate a big bull 
Um, and this time of the year, they're just wintered up. They're, they've got their winter coat. They're pretty chill. And if you can find them, they're most likely going to be pretty patternable with low pressure. So we're just going to try to find a giant pole and get one, guys. So that's my five tags. That's my prediction. Let me know what you think is going to happen on the fall hunts. I am trying to go five for five. That's my hashtag, five, the number four, five spelt out. So we're going to get it done and really commit most of my time and energy to those tags this year. So hope, hopefully you guys enjoyed the predictions and uh, we'll have to just kind of see how the season rolls out. Well, like I said, it should be fun to see how the predictions turn out. Um, come the end of the season, we'll be able to look back on this clip and see how it went. But I was just going to mention this guy. You guys have asked hundreds of times what this backdrop and target is. It's my friend's company. It's called Never Miss. This is the website domain name right here. You can go check it out. The 8x8, which is the one I have, and the 6x6, which is the one that BMAC just got, is available for local pickup here in Utah. Uh, you guys might be able to work out some shipping details if you want to pay for it if you're out of state. But new company, they got a variety of targets, so go check out their website now. Show them some love. But yes, this is the Never Miss Target 8x8. It's called the Big Old Target. Yeah, BMAC just got one, so we're going to bounce over to him. Hope you guys enjoyed my section of the vlog. Had a good weekend, and... Hope you did too, so we'll see you on the next one, guys. Whoa. <laughs> Happy Monday. Uh, I, are car alarms like that still actually a thing? Anyways, I uh, apologize for the background noise. Hope you guys are having a great Monday. It is in the morning time. I'm shooting my bow in my backyard and just shot a cold 40 group and it's not bad. All right, cold 40 guys, no lies. That's what we're working with. Based on my calculations, those would all kill an elk. This is the setup I got going on. You guys might've seen this uh, type of backdrop target before at Eric's house. It is by a new -er company here in Salt Lake called Never Miss. This particular one is a six foot by six foot and uh, it's pretty sweet. So the backdrop is uh, makes for a great target that's huge. Never Miss, catchy name. I don't think you could actually miss the target and it's uh, nice because I've got this kind of like life-size 2D elk target. We showed some different samples before, but this is like an improved version. I had Matt's brother bang this out. He has a little sign business that he works at, and we were able to get an image of an elk, print it on vinyl, and then put it on this uh, material, and it works pretty slick. The, the car alarm just continues to go off, guys. I really apologize about that. Uh, the 2D elk target is one of my favorite practice methods, predominantly because as you get further back, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 yards, there's no point of aim, right? There's not like an orange dot. There's not like a big black mark. There's not an X. You just got to aim where you, like, a, like a real animal, like you want to try to shoot the elk. So it's super interesting because when... You're back there, you don't necessarily see where it's hitting. You certainly can't see this small vitals that we put on it. So it's a very opaque, transparent, kind of rough estimation of where vitals are. And when you're back there shooting, you can't see it at all. So when you walk up, you can kind of get an idea of like, A, did I hit the vitals? Am I shooting where I should be? And then B, how did I group even though I don't have a specific aim point? Personally, it's my favorite form of practice getting in closer to the archery season opener. 3D targets, as you can see, like this one. Also great, but you can easily see the vitals. And if you're using optics, you can definitely see like where the 12 ring is, where the 10 ring or 8 ring, whatever. Sometimes these are also not representative of where, you know, the actual vitals are. That is my favorite form of uh, practice. I'm working on a couple fundamentals after having spent some time with Cody Jones at Wild Arrow Archery. Gosh, probably a month or so ago, we did some lessons on a weekend. Big three things. Number one is uh, pulling through, having a really strong into the back wall at full draw. It's easy to pull your bow back and kind of anchor in for the shot, but not really pulling hard against the back wall. 
And so that was the first thing, is making sure that's consistent, really strong at full draw. The second thing was face pressure. It's amazing how just the slightest amount of face or nose pressure on your bowstring at full draw can make a difference in your grouping. And then the third thing is, as you get more fatigued and you're holding at full draw and you're trying to like not slap the trigger if you're using an index release, but actually like pull through, execute a good shot, whatever kind of release you have, you'll start to get tired, right? You'll start to shake a little bit. And Cody really was uh, suggesting, you know, working on pulling through and like focusing through the shakes and how oftentimes you'll actually shoot better groups. Um, a lot of times my tendency was I'd start kind of getting shaky and tired and I just rush the shot. And he said, man, embrace the shakes. He's like, it'll be amazing how your sight pin kind of settles in to the target. So there's my cold 40. Those two are grouped real well. These ones are a touch higher, uh, but you can see kind of like all definitely in the vital range. All right, so I am shooting the uh, Carter Quickie release and uh, I have for several years. I really like it, but you can kind of tell where it sits on my hand is real short. Uh, the reason for that is when I'm at full draw, I can literally curl my finger around it and use my finger as a hook. That way I'm pulling through with my shoulder and executing the shot and I'm not having to like extend and reach with my index finger to try to execute the shot and essentially become a trigger. And you'll see a lot of times people will be reaching for that and having to kind of like slap it every time they want to shoot. So if you do shoot one of these type of releases, double check the way it's adjusted to your hand and to your palm and really work on getting it to where you've got to like come in and have your finger totally hooked over the top of it and then pull back through it to execute your shot. Just all little types of tricks and tendencies to help shoot more consistent and to uh, you know execute the shot better. Certainly not experts here, not at all. We're not Chris B, we're not John Dudley, uh, or any of those type of folks that are very extensive archery background, but we have shot bows for a lot of years and learned a lot of stuff from other people. So I'm gonna get back to shooting, but hope you guys are having a fantastic day. And uh, the season is, is approaching rather quickly. It's hard to believe that we already have a couple hunts kicking off here. And uh, man, September is going to be here before you know it. So thank you guys for the continued support and uh, have a wonderful Monday. We'll see you next week. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Logan here. Um, first things first, let's address the giant red elephant in the room. Yeah, got a zit on my nose, okay? Do your best not to stare at it or look at it. I guess I'm going through my third puberty. That guy living rent free. Now that we got that behind us, uh, welcome to the vlog, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, I am heading up uh, Mountain Drive. If you guys did not know, uh, we are heading on a hunt here very, very soon. We will be leaving August 9th. I will be, and Casey will be leaving August 7th. We're heading back up into the high country, not in Utah this time, but in Nevada. We are heading up into the high country to chase after some wily high country mule deer. And uh, in order to do that, our good buddy Bryce uh, is helping us out with some horses like he did the first time. But this will be the second time that this hunt has been on our channel. My goodness, I'm just gonna talk like this, okay? So in order for Bryce, he wants to get the horses more conditioned to hiking up mountains and he took them up to Island Park recently and got them out on some hikes, but he wants to get up some like steeper stuff with the horses to get them ready for this high country mule deer hunt. And so I thought, hey man, let's go on a ride tomorrow night and we can just go right up where I have a deer tag this year here in Idaho and uh, we'll take the horses, get them conditioned, we'll do some glassing and stuff. I have this area pretty locked down, but I've never glassed it in the evening. So I'm up here a little bit more early than he is. I'm gonna pull off the road up here, get the spotter out and just glass for like 30, 40 minutes until he rolls by and just see if I can pick out any mule deer bedded in the trees. I don't think they'll be up and moving. It's been really hot. It did rain a little bit up here, but see if we can pick some bedded out and just uh, see what we can see. Stay tuned. Maybe like my editing, I can edit something right here and uh, you won't be able to see it. See you in a second. Yep. Uh, come on.
So we went and stopped at the glassing point, way too dang hot. The whole side we were glassing was all like crushed in the sun and it's like 900 to 1,000 yards away. So when you're glassing, picking it apart, the heat waves are just obnoxious. So it was getting closer to seven when I'm supposed to meet my buddy Bryce at the trailhead. And uh, so I ran up here, it's now like 7.15. Might've had some trouble getting the horses together or whatever. Waiting at the trailhead, waiting for Bryce. And uh, when he shows up, we'll unload the horses. We got some friends though, cows. That's a killer. Those cows are freaking everywhere. It's just so annoying. I hear Bryce. Yee! What a rig. There's the horse wagon. Ha <laughs> ha, he made it. All right, so the man, the myth, the legend is here, Bryce Bybee. He's gonna be uh, helping us become cowboys, really. We've ridden your horses a few times, you've helped us out. Oh yeah. So we're gonna obviously be back in Nevada here, and it's coming up quick, like five days, six days. So I'm getting these horses conditioned, and it just so happens that uh, I have a tag in this unit. So it's a nice night for a ride. Getting overcast, it's a, I think it's a good trail. I always mob it on the, on the mountain bike, on the Rambo, but we're gonna ride up and uh, get the horses conditioned and maybe, maybe see the buck I've been after. I don't know. I have a feeling he's been on the other side of the mountain, just looking at Onyx and stuff, but perhaps we'll see him on this side. I have before, so biggest thing, getting these horses ridden, getting them ready for Nevada. Riding cash. Doing great. You're doing good. What are you? Oh, here we go. Get it out of you. You're missing the sunset, Cash. You're on a mission, huh? Cash wants to get up to the basin so we can find the big buck, but he just needs to chill and enjoy the sights. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's a racehorse. Whoa, there we go. What do you think of Chuck so far this year? Chuck's out of shape. <laughs> a little bit fat and lazy. You think we're pushing him too hard? No, that's good for him. There's one more just, little. Just what he needs is one good ride before there. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a steady incline. So if you guys have watched on previous vlogs, I've I spend quite a bit of time up here, and uh, I always pass this older gentleman and his wife on horses, and I'm on the Rambo bike, and I'm always so jealous. And this is just freaking awesome for me right now because I've been up and down this trail probably a hundred times, and this is the first time horseback and so it's pretty dang awesome <laughs> especially especially when they hit the power band like that but this is cool horses are doing great we're still in the thick it'll clear up when we get a little bit higher something I've noticed is um, this is a pretty popular mountain bike trail and so in the mornings when I'm ripping up I hit a lot of spider webs but all the bikers earlier today have cleared those for us so far so okay that's cow poop So that's nice, but yeah, being on this trail right now, right as the sun's setting, it's pretty freaking hard to beat. We'll see you guys when it opens up, up higher a little bit. Let's see if, I don't think it's gonna work, but not working. Sorry guys, I did not bring the spotter on the horses, but the big buck is out on the basin. So we found the big buck. He's all by himself, which is a little bit weird. I think he's just getting older. Typically runs with a group of smaller deer, but gotta lay eyes on him. And it is a beautiful night. Glad Bryce got to see him. Um, yeah, he's he's all as good as I thought he was. Have to spend some mornings out here and uh, get some better phone scope for you guys. I literally got no footage of him. He's probably 800 yards away. You guys watch this year, I'm gonna kill that buck. Pretty cool seeing him up here. What's going on guys and welcome back to my portion of vlog. This week we are doing something pretty fun. I'm up here with my buddy Braden, big time crit. He is actually learning how to run a camera a little more efficiently. He is filming and editing this whole video, this portion of the vlog. So let me know how you think he does in the comments below. But we are up here in one of my favorite high country mule deer spots. We drove for about an hour, hour and a half in the Can-Am. Now we are getting ready to do a hellacious hike. It's like a four mile hike. We gotta climb about 1500 feet vertical and then run a ridge for about two or three miles to get to where we can glass. 
The goal of today is to find a big old mature mule deer, buck, or big bull elk. We've seen both back here in this canyon, so hopefully we will have time. We're thinking about half an hour of daylight to glass before it's dark because this hike's gonna take us a good minute. So hopefully we can find something exciting to show you guys. You'll be the first to see it, but right now we got a big obstacle ahead of us. Climb in straight. Glassing knob number one. It's not our final destination. We're gonna stop and glass this other basin before we get too much higher. This is a spot we don't really spend a whole lot of time in. Historically, we've seen deer bouncing back and forth. We're gonna check this spot out because it's already shaded. We've been sitting here glassing for about an hour actually. We haven't turned up any mule deer yet. We glassed up about 20 or 30 elk down there in the bottom. No giant bulls, but we've seen some big bulls in the past in this basin, which kind of gets us excited for September. I imagine if we end up seeing a big buck, it's gonna be this last 10 or 15 minutes of light. Alright guys, that is a wrap for my portion of this week's vlog. We accomplished our goal to some extent. We got up here, put our eyes on some animals, some deer and elk. What we kind of learned from today, these deer are staying in their beds till the absolute last 10 or 15 minutes of light. And it's chilly right now, like I should have my jacket on and just shivering. These deer are staying in their beds pretty late. I think these bigger bucks, they're probably just barely getting out of bed and we just can't see them yet or they're still in bed, which makes it tough. That's what we've learned. August 3rd, these deer are still being fairly nocturnal we have some intel of where they are their patterns we can take that intel and put one of these deer on the ground this season fingers crossed next time you see me i'm going to be on the hill chasing mule deer with casey in another state good evening good afternoon how are we people at home people at home uh today is a very exciting day um should go the trent fisher on them that's trent fisher third yeah. button my, my chest is a little wet i just got out of the shower it's getting weird anyways guys it's a very exciting day today is what is today, Logue? August 7th. You're gonna, you're, you're gonna get in your truck, or in Matt's truck, and drive to your first time of the year. Wow, just spilled the beans, just like that. Beans everywhere. Uh, beans everywhere, pick up the beans. Yes, today is the day we leave for our first freaking hunt. Do you guys believe that? I can't believe that. It's still, uh, can't wrap my mind around it. Um, we drew, me and my neighbor, good buddy Bryce, drew early season archery deer tags in Nevada. And so we are headed out um, tomorrow or today. We, so me and Matt are going over early. We're gonna go over tonight, stay at the trailhead, and then backpack in to where we're gonna camp at. Logie and Bryce are gonna leave tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Driving the horses. Um, and then they're gonna stay at the trailhead tomorrow night, and then on the 9th, they're gonna pack in with um, some yeah. horses. Yeah. Uh, season starts on the 10th, so me and Matt are gonna have a good day full now. day and a half, two days over there to, to do a little scouting. If you guys watch BSY, Two, the very first series of BSY2 back in 2019, three years ago, was the exact same hunt we're going to do right now. Uh, going to the same place, gonna at least camp in the same basin, hopefully, if there's no one else camped in there. It's um, a rad basin. Logan thinks it's a rad basin. It's an eagle. That's, a, that's an three. eagle. Yeah, so that's kind of why me and Matt are going over a day early, It's just to go in and make sure we have uh, a camp spot. We need this camp spot just because it's right next to a creek and uh, for the horses, basically. Um, anyway, I am so unprepared like every year, but I do have the majority of my pack loaded. Man, it always feels a little heavy. <laughs> Not gonna lie. But if you guys have been watching our stories this summer, for about the last month and a half, I've been doing a little uh, backpack cardio every night where I've had 62 pounds of weight in that thing going upstairs downstairs, around the track, all around the high school. So I feel somewhat prepared for that aspect of it. Bow shooting really good. I screwed on broadheads two days ago, started shooting those, they shot amazing. Anyway, uh, Matt's on his way here. Bryce is gonna come over. Um, we're trying to, me and Matt are trying to go pretty light. 
So it doesn't seem like it's happening, but we're gonna go pretty light and then everything we don't need for the first two days, these guys are gonna bring in on the horses. So we're gonna kinda organize that before me and Matt bounce out. Plus I woke up and I have a sty in my eye and it hurts really bad. My mom used to always tell me that if you get styes in your eye, that means you're doing what, Logan? I don't know what. You're editing this, so my mom would tell me if I got a sty in my eye, that means I was peeing in the road. What? Yeah, not what you just said. <laughs> anyway, all right, let's get some stuff ready. All right, we're somewhat closer. Mateo, how we feeling, dude? Feeling a lot better about life and things. Better about things and lives? Yeah, now that I triple checked my backpack. I saw a backpack. There, there was a couple bag dumps. How many bag dumps did you do before you left your house? One. One, and then one here. Okay, like but... so Maddie's stuff. Really, we were supposed to only take enough stuff for two days. That looks heavy, bro. It's all relative though, like yeah. the only thing different you take for more than two days is like food. Yeah, and then this is all mine, Logan's, and Maddie's stuff that the horses are gonna bring in. Monday? Tuesday. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night you're oh, coming. Oh, no, 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 Tuesday morning. We'll Tuesday the morning. Tomorrow night. So this, I got my pack in the truck, and then the horses are bringing all the food in as well. I froze a bunch of, pre-made bunch of meals, froze them, um, they're gonna bring those in with a bunch of dry food. We should be good. I'm feeling good about it now. I got most of my stuff loaded in the truck. I never feel good until everything is in the truck in its place, and I'm like, okay, guys, wish us luck. I will not probably be not on the vlog for a week, so uh, don't miss me too much. Don't miss Matt and Logie. Eric and Brian have to hold down the vlogs until we get back. Anyways, wish us luck, guys. Fall is here. It is upon us. I cannot believe it. We have a fun-filled season this year uh, with some really, really good tags, some really fun adventures. Cannot wait to bring it to all of you uh, soon. We'll let you guys know kind of how we're going to roll out the season here shortly, but uh, I think you guys are going to enjoy it. Anyways, guys, until I see you again, signing off on the Hush Life vlog. Say bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Just planning to kill big deer. Bye. That's a strategy.